Hi there, in this video I'm going to talk to you about a holding company group structure. So if you've got a trading business and you're also basically looking to invest that, that's a great potential use of this type of structure. And also if you are just starting up in business and you are looking to build a significant business empire, you want different businesses doing different activities, but you're all going to be centrally owned by yourself or other investors, a holding company can be a fantastic tax efficient way of doing this. So a holding company, what is it? Well, the best place to start when we talk about holding companies is looking at where most people are now. And usually this is where you personally own the shares in one or more limited companies. So for instance, if you've got a trading company, which you've, you know, if you start your own business, a consultancy business, retail, you've got a business which produces excess cash flow, you pay for your living through this, but ultimately you've got money left over that you want to use for investments. Typically, this would probably look something like that. So you can see there, you've got you personally and you own say one or two companies. What you might want to do actually is you want to move, you move money between the two companies like that. So money between company to company. And basically if you do that, there are a couple of different ways you can, you can do it. So the first one might be where you take the money out from one company as a dividend and then you personally loan it back in to the other limited company to invest. The problem there is that you're going to get absolutely rinsed from a dividend tax point of view. You'd be paying dividend tax at you know, 39.35% potentially, depending on the amount you withdraw. So you don't want to be doing it that way. But what you could do is you could loan it from one limited company to the other. The problem there is that over time, this loan balance is going to build up in that it might be 20K this year, 100K next. Over the next 10, 20 years, because that's what we're planning for when we do this kind of tax efficient structuring, we're planning far ahead into the future because you do want to build that long-term wealth. What would happen is you'd have say a half a million pound loan balance and at some point that might need to be repaid. So if you look to sell the company, you want to exit, what's going to happen with that loan? It could be written off, it could be repaid, but that would give you a problem in that you need to pay half a million pound in cash back from your property investment company over to a trading company. Not a situation you want to be in. And the same as well is if your trade deteriorates, you know, you get sued by creditors, you get forced into a creditor's voluntary liquidation, they might potentially look at that half a million pound asset, because that's what it would be, it'd be a loan asset on the company balance sheet, and they might like to call it in, potentially try to force you to sell properties and things like that. So overall, that's not a good structure, and you do want to avoid that structure if possible. Instead, what we have is a holding company structure, which is like this. So rather than you personally owning the top, is that a focus? Yeah, so you've got you personally at the top, holding company, then you might have a trading company and an investment company at the bottom. And now what that group structure allows you to do is move money around tax efficiently, move assets around tax efficiently. If one company, say for instance, your trading company has a loss one period, you can actually utilize that loss against the profits from your property investment company and even more. So you've got stamp duty benefits as well. If you had your property investment business, but you wanted to separate it out, you know, diversify your portfolio, protect it. You don't want all of your assets in one company, for instance, you want to segregate them if you had all of these property all of these companies owned under a holding company structure you wouldn't need to pay stamp duty land tax or capital gains tax at all move them around whereas if you didn't all of those would be market value disposals potentially so that's just some of the benefits as well other benefits might include when you're looking at disposing of your trading business so that trading business there If you're looking at disposing of that, if you were to sell it personally while it's in your own name, you would qualify for business asset disposal relief in most instances, which would exempt or basically give you a relief of 10% on the capital gain rather than it being taxed at 20% most likely, but that's only up to a million pounds. So for people with larger businesses than this, you would still pay a significant amount of tax on that disposal. Whereas if you had a holding company structure in place, what would actually happen is you should qualify for the substantial shareholders exemption, which would allow it to be totally tax free as long as the holding company owns more than 10% of the trading business. So if you sold your trading business, your chain of restaurants potentially for 10 million pounds, what you could actually do is have that whole 10 million pounds into your holding company tax free 
to then redeploy into real estate or other investments. So in that case, it's going to significantly impact the amount of returns that you can get, especially when you compound that tax saving year one, perhaps over the next 10, 20 or 30 years. If you've already got a trading business set up, you can still put one of these holding company structures into place. Depending on the actual size of your business, depends on the route you need to go down. Broadly, if your company is recently established, you should be able to do it through a kind of share exchange mechanism. Otherwise, if your business is larger, we will need to write to HMRC to establish the values of your business and also confirm that it doesn't fall foul of many of the anti-avoidance provisions, transactions and securities rules, and so on. So it's a lot more of a lengthy process in terms of the professional work involved, but the same outcome can still be achieved. Typically, you're looking at a couple of thousand pounds in professional fees to get this done. But if you're a large business and you are looking to invest, you might have property investment, service accommodation, your trading business, to buy property investments and also crypto, you probably want that kind of group structure. So paying a couple of thousand pounds now to get the best structure long term, if that's going to save you a couple of thousand pounds every year for the next 30 years, then you can have extra money to invest, which you might get a 30% return on. So you actually can get even more tax savings off the back of those original tax savings. And it's an absolute no brainer. As always, guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please do make sure that you like and subscribe.